Good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Jesus at Abundant Life Hom Homestead, where every weekday morning we follow the Connections Bible Study. The Connections Bible Study follows the Revised Common Lectionary. And today, Tuesday, July 11th, we are reading a New Testament passage. So today's reading is going to be in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. And as we read, we write down what the verses say to us today. And we ask that you do the same. Um, include whatever jumps out at you or the main message that you hear. In this type of study, everyone's ideas are similar in some ways and different in others, but nobody has a wrong answer. Feel free to comment below with your thoughts on today's passage and also read what others have to say. Because when our diversity of thoughts come together, we all gain a better grasp of the word. And while you're at it, if you have any prayer requests, go ahead in the comments below. Be assured they will not be ignored. So, um, the context, there isn't a whole lot of context here. This Romans is Paul's letter to the Church of Rome. Um, and it's, we're continuing on talking about the sin and the nature of sin. And um, he's basically trying to help us all understand how things work now that Jesus has been resurrected. And what that looks like. It's a uh, an answer, a connection to Romans seven, which was pure struggle, almost dark struggle, and we there was no way out till the very last verse of Romans seven. He's like, Jesus is the answer. Now we get the whole explanation as we're getting into Romans 8. We're going to get the whole explanation of how and why Jesus is the answer. So, do you want me to read first or do you want to read first? Well, I'm on the list first, but this doesn't always have to follow. Okay, I'm going to read first, and today I'm going to read out of the New International Version. If you notice, we like to... Uh, jump around between some different versions here and that just helps give you a different perspective and different context on the passages you're reading okay Romans 8 chapter 1 or Romans chapter 8 verse 1 therefore there is no condemn condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the like, like, likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law may be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even through your, even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. I'm going to be reading from the Passion Translation. So Romans 8, starting at verse 1. So now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the Anointed One. For the law of the Spirit of life flowing through the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and death. For God achieved what the law was unable to accomplish because the law was limited by the weakness of human nature. Yet God sent us his Son in human form to identify with human weakness. 
clothed it with humanity, God's Son gave his body to be the sin offering so that God could once and for all condemn the guilt and power of sin. So now every righteous requirement of the law can be fulfilled through the anointed one living his life in us. And we are free to live, not according to our flesh, but by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. Those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves, but those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. For the sense and reason of the flesh is death, but the mindset controlled by the Spirit finds life and peace. In fact, the mindset focused on the flesh fights God's plan and refuses to submit to its direction, because it cannot. For no matter how hard they try, God finds no pleasure with those who are controlled by the flesh. But when the Spirit of Christ empowers your life, you are not dominated by the flesh, but by the Spirit, and you are not joined to the Spirit of the Anointed One, you are not of Him. Now Christ lives His life in you, and even, through, even though your body may be dead because of the effects of sin, His life-giving Spirit imparts life to you because you are fully accepted by God. Yes, God raised Jesus to life, and since God's Spirit of resurrection lives in you, He will also raise your dying body to life by the same Spirit that breathes life into you. Okay. <clears throat> so, I, I could have, that. this is one that we could talk about for way too long, a lot longer than we want to spend in a day. I could have made a bunch of points, but uh, I kind of started at the top with we cannot be condemned because we are the body of Christ and he cannot be condemned. Romans 8 is my favorite chapter. Hmm. So um, I should just let you have it. <laughs> the law and all of God's requirements are fulfilled with the sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus is the answer, which you said in your context, but Jesus is the answer to the conflict of the sin nature and spiritual nature. Mm -hmm. It's something that fights in us, but it doesn't need to once we accept Jesus. And because um, he lives in us, the Holy Spirit empowers us to live a holy life and not one ruled by sin. So there's just so much. So I said, this, is a, this is a section we could talk about all day. I was kind of hoping for a little back and forth because I did have more points, but you and I gave all yours because it's your favorite chapter. <laughs> but. But yeah, and and this kind of goes along with your first point where you said the law and all of God's requirements are fulfilled within the sacrifice of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, my perspective on that was the law of the flesh can only point to our sins and therefore fails. Only Jesus can defeat sin and fulfill the law and fulfill the law it and fulfill it in us if we live according to the Spirit. And then. Uh, Added one last little note, all who are in Christ are spirit-filled. In the Passion Translation, they have, uh, one of the reasons it's my favorite, one of my favorite translations is because there's little notes, and there's lots of notes, mm. and there's lots of notes in Romans 8, but um, with Romans 4, there's a note that I wanted to share because it's... You mean verse 4? Well, yeah, 8, 4. What joyous truths are found in Romans 8. All that God requires of us has been satisfied by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The life of Jesus in us is enough to satisfy God. The power of our new life is not the works of our weak humanity, but the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit released in us. And I'd say that the, 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 life, the life of Jesus in us is enough to satisfy God. I, I would put the, I would add that that's really all that can satisfy God. It, mm -hmm. um, in in the scripture reading, it says the flesh cannot satisfy God. Yeah. It, it's just not possible for us to. That's I would say have to. enough is the, yeah. You are enough. Everything. Everything is enough. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Anything else you want to add? Not right now. I think we... Cause we're, only, we're only about 10 minutes in. Yeah, we continue in Romans 8 next week. Oh, also. do we? Okay. So, yeah, I don't want to... So, we, yeah, we don't... I guess we don't want to go too deep there because we don't want to spoil next week. Um, but there's... We can go back and spoil last week. There's so much with Romans 8 that... Um, this chapter, there's something for so many parts of your life. You can find hope. You can find... There's wisdom, there's direction, there's explanation. It's it's all there. Um, it's as, I think one of the most encouraging. Especially if you read it right after Romans seven, and you really mm -hmm. you really take if you're really taking it to heart. I mean, Roman Romans seven can get pretty dark. You know, it's like we don't have stand but it a ends chance. On a good note. Yeah, so. yeah, it, it ends on a yeah, right, right there in the last sentence, it ends on a good note. It's like we we can't do this. We don't. I can't do this. I don't understand. I want to do good. I'm just doing bad. There's really no hope for me, but there's Jesus. And now, what does what does Jesus do? Well, th this really continues that conflict instead of just being the answer for it. It continues mm -hmm. that conflict. But now it's between Christ and flesh, yeah. and spirit and flesh, you know, and Christ wins. It's just because that's, that's what he was here to do. And I think the biggest thing to remember is um, we're not in this alone, and um, we don't have to guess what we're supposed to do. We have the guide of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's going to guide us in the right direction, and of course, it's ultimately up to us whether we follow that guidance or choose our own direction um, because we do so have free will god doesn't take that away he just gives us the tools to overcome it yeah you keep talking a second there's <laughs> there's some uh, yeah. this this gives i read something from a bible scholar I've lost it. And when um, we know that Jesus was fully human and fully God, and what we forget is that we we focus on the human part and tend to forget the God part and realize that He can be so many places at once because He's omnipresent. He can be everywhere all at once. So he can be in me, and he can be in you, and someone 10,000 miles away, all at the same time. What are you trying Go to ahead. do? I, I completely lost my thoughts. So. <laughs> <clears throat> it's all good. Um, And, I mean, oh, this is a good one, because I've got, this is an awesome book, if you don't have a Bible, the Access Bible, it's a study Bible, I use it at, through my school, and I have used it in so many studies, I can't even count them, but um, Romans 8, 1, it has a note, no condemnation, those in Christ no longer feel doomed, and I know right now, I've come across so many people that are struggling and that's what seven is seven's talking about the struggle but you turn that chapter and you realize that we don't need to live in the struggle and there is hope and we don't need to um we don't need to feel doomed anymore because there's so much more No, no. I came across something, and it, it flashed across my mind a minute ago, and I, I've kind of lost it. So. Oh, this is another it's okay. Thing. I should have read these looking. notes before we started. Yeah. Um, 
God's life-giving spirit unleashed in Christ becomes a liberating law, replacing the Mosaic law that sin uses to produce death. So the, the Mosaic law was rules and rules mm -hmm. and rules and more rules and then more a rules, few more rules yeah. and, 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 and followed little, by rules. A little bit yeah. of judgment and punishment when you break those rules. Right. And this is God's liberating law. We're free from those. Not all of those rules, obviously, because those are not things that we should be doing. But, but, but if we follow Jesus' commandments, then we just naturally follow all right. those laws. Right. And we don't need to worry about how we're washing sure. something. It's real simple. Just <laughs> love in the true sense. Love your neighbor mm -hmm. as yourself. And you'll, all the laws... They'll fall. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's all right. And then you, won't, you wouldn't break down the law anyway. Mm -hmm. But as, as humans decided more and more what is and isn't sin, the ball just got bigger and bigger and bigger, but all it could really ever do was point at sin. You get a mm -hmm. sin, you get a sin, you get a sin, you get a sin, you get a sin, I, get a, I, I don't have sin, but you get a sin, you... <laughs> And that's how you know, and and that's that's really why they, you condemn the Pharisees so much because that's exactly what they the hell they acted. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm the high and mighty. Well, I'm, that was part not of not high and mighty, but I'm don't look at my sin. You got a sin. You got a sin. That was part of the mosaic sin. law, though. There had to be the person that enforced the laws, and that person theoretically was supposed to be above reproach. And they were supposed to be the closest example to God on earth, which we know is not possible. Yeah. But so they were, that's why they were always pointing and never pointing to themselves because they couldn't reveal their flaws. Because then it would make it harder for them to follow the law, the Mosaic law. I think that was a, that had to be a heavy burden, though. Yeah. Because they couldn't... Depending on how they carried it, I think. Yeah. And, I mean, if they thought of themselves as high and mighty, but if they... <coughs> I'm thinking I'm thinking more of Aaron, the first yeah. one, that it, the burden of having to be perfect when it's impossible and not having someone that he could talk to which is something that we have now. We can we mm -hmm. know that we all fall short and can share mm -hmm. that with each other. Even Paul, who wrote this, he was a Pharisee. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was can a you make he was mistakes? a good well. <laughs> we 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 call him mistakes, but you look at it, he was actually a good Jew. I mean, yeah. He was doing what the law said to do until one day Jesus met him on the road and said, "Why are you persecuting me?" Mm -hmm. and, and it all, all came to light. But that he, had to be he something was, that he carried with him afterwards too, to get all the death. But he probably did. I wonder if that was the thing. I don't know. Let's look things up. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we, we, we are talk getting about that way all off subject. <laughs> See, here's the path we were taking, <laughs> and here's the road we're on now. We're orbiting Jupiter. That's what happens when we talk about Romans 8. <laughs> I did not know you felt so strongly about Romans 8, or I just sat here and shut up. Romans 8. The whole chapter. I thought, like, it was later in Romans. I do really, um, 30, I believe it's 36, is, um, like my absolute favorite, but. Yeah. Okay. But no, it's chapter 8. Okay. I was saying verse 30. Yeah. I don't remember. We will get there, though, because we're going <laughs> through Romans. Taking a road trip through Romans this summer. Yeah. With the church. Mm -hmm. That's something if you, if, if you care to join our uh, Sunday service, usually preached by Pastor Neil, sometimes by Pastor Todd. Um well, we have to put up a link for the Facebook page, but uh, we're going through a uh, 
the Romans verse every week is the focus of the sermon every week right now. Because with the lectionary, um, we're pretty much hitting all of Romans yeah. this summer, or at least glossing some areas. I know we skipped a little bit there at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Some of the points that we skipped had a lot of context. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to add to this today? No, we should probably stop. All right. <laughs> I'll shut up. Like I said, I expect next Tuesday to be a little longer, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if you are watching later and not live, please feel free to still comment and include it, your thoughts and any prayer requests you may have. Okay. We will pray now. Father, we thank you for the wor your word and your encouragement and um, love that shines through in this chapter. It's There's so much in here, so much encouragement, and uh, we just feel the love coming through these pages. And um, I just ask that you touch everyone that's watching and get within earshot of just all of us here. And... Um, let us be an example to others and let your love flow through us and to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank you for joining our Bible study today. And hopefully you stay with this Bible study. If not, we hope you stay with another Bible study. Or at least dive into the Bible on your own every day. Because I can promise you that consistent Bible study will change your life and change it for the better. Tomorrow is Wednesday, July the 12th. We will be reading from Genesis chapter 25, 19 through 34. Melinda didn't make a sign for that. <laughs> I only had one paper. That's too far. <laughs> you can fold it in half. I and then did. you've got four sides to write on. That gets you the whole week. So, we hope you have a blessed day from Abundant Life Homestead, and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you.